Good morning students. We know that the cell has been discovered for a certain purpose of generating some good organisms whether we may consider it as unicellular organisms or multicellular organisms. So based on this function a particular cell has to perform in the body of an organism the cell has a certain shape, size and number. Here we are, here we are going to talk about the cell number and based on that uh, if a cell has a single cell in its body and if a single cell is performing all the function of an organism such an organism will be considered as unicellular organism and if there are many cells and by division of labor they are performing different different functions in the body of an organism such organism will be considered as multicellular organism so first of all let's discuss about the unicellular organism so the here in front of you there are three examples of unicellular organisms that is amoeba, paramecium, euglena Actually, the, all these three organisms are single-celled. That means they are independent and have a capacity to self-replicate themselves. That means they can form their own daughter cells by dividing the body into two parts. Okay? Now you can see that they also can engulf the food by creating certain invaginations. You can see that amoeba is, is opening its certain part, it's protruding outside and it's able to uh, engulf the food and in, in such a way the amoeba intakes food. Similarly, the, the, is the case with the paramecium and euglena. So secondly, the multicellular organisms. In the multicellular organisms, organisms, there are multiple cells which perform different different functions in the body of a certain organism. Now you can see. I told you just now that in the unicellular organisms a single cell was performing all the functions. That means we can understand that if in the unicellular organisms have a very simple body structure. The body structure is not very complex. The organization is not very complex. But in the case of multicellular organisms the organization, body organization is very very complex. That means they have different different systems to perform, different functions to perform like respiration, digestion, excretion, reproduction which are being performed by different different cells in the body of a multicellular organism. Let's discuss these different functions. Now you can see in front of you, in the head there is a nerve cell. You know I earlier told you that the nerve cell is meant to transfer information from the brain to the different body parts. Similarly, next is the red blood cell. So you know that the red blood cells contain hemoglobin and the hemoglobin has a tendency to absorb oxygen and transport to the different body parts and even the hemoglobin imparts red color to the blood. So next is the muscle cells. You know that the muscle cells are present in the heart, in our limbs, in our feet, in our elementary canal, in our urinary bladder and it helps to for the locomotion and movements of the different body parts and the functioning or the movement of the urine or the blood in the body. Similarly, the next type of cell in a, uh, in a certain human body is that a sperm cell which is meant for uh, pro progenation that is for reproduction and such, such function is performed by the sperm cell. So the so next cell is that the bone cell. So bone cell has a certain function of storing certain minerals and providing certain stiffness and body support to the different organs and certain amount of uh, support for the whole body. So together all these cells, that is nerve cell, red blood cell, and the muscle cell, and sperm cell, and the bone cell together perform certain kinds of function in the body of this organism and this is known as a division of labor. That means every work has been di divided to different different particular cells. Okay, so let us first of all discuss the difference between the unicellular organism and the multicellular organism. See, in the unicellular organism they have a single cell whereas the multicellular organism they consist of many cells. So the size has been 1 to 10 micrometer and the size of a multicellular organism in the uh, cell is that is 5 to 100 micrometer. It varies between 5 to 100 micrometer. So the next is actually the, in the unicellular organisms the division of labor does not exist. Means a single cell is performing all the vital activities of the organism. Whereas in the case of multicellular organisms, all the activities, all the functions are performed by different different cells as I told you just now. Next, secondly, their lifespan is very short because they contain a single cell. If the single cell will get damaged or injured, the whole body of the particular organism will be finished or destroyed. And in the case of multicellular organisms, the lifespan is very long because uh, if a single cell gets damaged or injured, the new cell takes its place because there are multiple cells in the body of a multicellular organism. Okay, so thank you students.
this was a discussion about cell number the about unicellular and multicellular organisms and you can note it down as it is in your copy thank you very much